Welcome back, students. This is the Silver Watchman, and this is episode number 66 of the Odd World series. In the previous episode of the Odd World series, we went over Ezekiel chapters 31, 30, and 29, just in the reverse order. In this episode, we're going over chapters 32, which has a convenient amount of 32 verses in it, and 33, which has a whopping, I did not plan this, 33 verses. <laughs> that's actually kind of, I'm not even going to lie, that's a little peculiar. That That's just, that's just a little too perfect. But you know what, this is a nice episode that we're coming back to, coming back to this series as I... Last week, I was covering some rather topical things that, honestly, didn't really need to be covered, but at the same time, I was I just kind of needed a little mental break from all the teaching. And, you know, just wanted to get my opinions out there. Let me adjust my mic before we kick this off with some prayer. By the way, if you like what I do, and you're a return watcher... You know, and you're not subscribed, well, you know, subscribe. It's as simple as that. I mean, or you could and you just keep on popping in every now and again. It's good for the algorithm. Either way, just share the video, share the channel. But we could always talk about that at the end of the video. So how about you join me in some prayer? To make sure that we don't get distracted. <clears throat> Dear Lord, may you guide the message today. And may you ensure that every single person that has come here to learn will walk away with a new set of information and to be able to properly break down your word. May you give understanding to every single person that has come here. Understanding over heaven, understanding over hell, understanding over you, your will, and your word, as well as understanding over earth itself and all its denizens. We thank you for doing so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Not gonna lie, though. It's been a week. <laughs> On the bright side, though, I'm back to doing what I enjoy the most. And that's teaching you guys. Let me take a drink of my water, and uh, we'll get started. <coughs> Ezekiel, chapter 32, King James Version of the Bible. And it came to pass in the twelfth year, in the twelfth month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Say unto him, Thou art like a young lion of the nations, thou art as a whale in the seas, and thou camest forth with thy rivers, and troubledest the waters with thy feet, and foulest their rivers. Thus saith the Lord God, I will spread out my net over thee, with a company of many people, and they shall bring thee up in my net. Then I will leave thee upon the land, I will cast thee forth upon the open field, I will cause all the fowls of the heaven to remain, to remain upon thee, and I will fill the beasts of the whole earth with thee, and I will lay flesh upon the mountains. I will lay thy flesh upon the mountains, and fill the valleys with thy height. I will also water with thy blood the land wherein thou swimmest, even to the mountains, and the rivers shall be full of thee. And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven. I will make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud. 
and the moon shall not give her light. All the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee, and set darkness upon thy land, saith the Lord God. I will also vex the hearts of many people, when I shall bring thy destruction among the nations into the countries which thou hast not known. Yeah, I will make many people amazed at thee, and their king shall be horribly afraid for thee, when I shall brandish my sword before them, and they shall tremble at every moment, every man for his own life in the day of thy fall. For thus saith the Lord God, the Lord... The sword of the king of Babylon shall come upon thee, by the swords of the mighty will I cause thy multitude to fall, the terrible of the nations. All of them, and they shall spoil the pomp of Egypt, and all the multitude thereof shall be destroyed. I will destroy also all the beasts thereof besides the great waters, neither shall the foot of man trouble them any more, nor the hoofs of, the, of beasts trouble them. Then I will make their waters deep, I will, and cause the rivers to run like oil, saith the Lord God. When I shall make the land of Egypt desolate, and the country shall be destitute of whereof, of that whereof it was full, then I shall smite all them that dwell therein, and they shall know that I am the Lord. This is the lamentation wherewith they shall lament her. The daughters of the nations shall lament her. They shall lament for her, even for Egypt, and for all her multitude, saith the Lord God. It came to pass also in the twelfth year, in the twelfth day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, wail for the multitude of Egypt, and cast them down, even her and the daughters of the famous nations unto the nether parts of the earth, with them that go down into the pit, whom dost thou pass in beauty? Go down, and be thou laid with the uncircumcised. They shall fall in the midst of them that are slain by the sword. She is delivered to the sword. Draw her, and all her multitudes, the strong among the mighty, shall speak to him, out of the midst of hell with them that help him. They are gone down, they lie uncircumcised, slain by the sword. Ashur is there, and all her company. His graves are about him, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, whose graves are set by the, pit, set by the sides of the pit, and her company is round about her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which caused which caused terror in the land of the living. There is alarm, and all her multitude round about her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which are gone, down uncircumcised into the nether parts of the earth, which caused their terror in the land of the living, yet have they borne their shame with them that go down to the pit. They have set her a bed in the midst of the of the slain with all her multitude. Her graves are round about him, all of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword, though the terror was caused in the land of the living. Yet they have borne the, their shame with them that go down to the pit. He is put in the midst of them that be slain. There is Meshech, Tubal, and all her multitude. Her graves are round about him. All of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword, though they cause their terror in the land of the living. They shall not lie with the mighty that are fallen of the uncircumcised which are gone down to hell with their weapons of war. They have laid their swords under their heads, but their iniquities shall be upon their bones. Though they were a terror in the, 
of the mighty in the land of the living. Yeah. Thou shalt be broken in the midst of the uncircumcised, and shalt lie with them that are slain with the sword. There is Edom, her kings and all her princes, which with their might are laid by them which are, were slain by the sword. They shall lie with the uncircumcised, and with them that go down to the pit, there be princes of the north, all of them, and all the Zidonians which are gone down with the slain, with their terror, they are ashamed of their might, and they lie uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword, and bear their shame with them that go down to the pit. Pharaoh shall see them, and shall be comforted over all his multitude. Even Pharaoh and all his army slain by the sword, save the Lord God. For I have caused my terror in the land of the living, and ye shall be laid in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that are slain by the sword, even Pharaoh and all his multitude, save the Lord God. <clears throat> Ezekiel, chapter 33, King James Version of the Bible. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts, and set them for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet taketh not warning, and taketh not warning. If the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But the watchman, but if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth, and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, what... That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. <clears throat> Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he, do, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Therefore, O thou, son of man, speak unto the house of Israel, thus ye speaking, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how should we live then? Then live. <laughs> Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye and and turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, The righteous the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression.
For as, as for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live. If he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Again, when I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, if he turn from his sin, and do that which is lawful and right. If the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed, walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. Ye have done that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. Yet the children of thy people, the way of the Lord is not equal. But as for them, their way is not equal. When the righteousness turneth, turneth from righteousness, and committeth iniquity, he shall die, he shall even die thereby. But if the wicked turn from his wickedness, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall live thereby. Yet ye say, The way of the Lord is not equal, O ye house of Israel. I will judge you, every one after his ways. And it came to pass in the twelfth year of our captivity, in the tenth month, in the fifth day of the month, that one had escaped out of Jerusalem, came unto me saying, The city is smitten. <laughs> now the hand of the Lord was upon me in the even, evening, afore he that, had es that was escaped came, and had opened my mouth, until he came to me in the morning, and my mouth was opened, and I was no more dumb. <laughs> Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, they that inhabit those wastes of the land of Israel speak, saying, Abraham was one, and he inherited the land, but we are many, and the land is given us for inheritance. Wherefore, Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Ye eat with, with the blood, and lift up your eyes toward your idols, and shed blood. Shall ye possess the land? And shall ye possess the land? Ye stand upon your sword, ye work abomination, and ye defile every one his neighbor's wife, and ye shall possess the land? Say thou thus unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, As I live, surely that they are in the waste shall fall by the sword. And him that is, that is in the open field will I give to the beast to be devoured. And they that be in the forts and the caves shall die of the pestilence. For I will lay the land most desolate in pomp of her strength, and, and the pomp of her strength shall cease. And the mountains of Israel shall be desolate, that none shall pass through. Then they shall know that I am the Lord, when I have laid the land most desolate because of all their abominations which they have committed. Also, thou, son of man, the children of thy people, still are talking against thee by the walls and, and in the doors of the houses, and speak to one another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you. And hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. <laughs> and they come unto thee, as the people cometh, and they sit before thee, as my people. And they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they shew much love, but their heart goeth after, much, after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them, as a very lovely song, 
of one that hath a pleasant voice, and can play well on an instrument, for they hear thy words, and they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it, it will come. Then they shall know that a prophet hath been among them. Okay, these have been rather intense. I shall return after highlighting a single more verse. Three have already been highlighted. The last one will be highlighted soon. And I'm back. So, we're going to be looking at Ezekiel... Uh, verse 2 for chapter 32 and for 33 we're looking at verses oh <laughs> sorry sorry I <laughs> oh gosh Look, I'm sorry, it's just the humor of this game just catches me off guard every now and again, and I just, I just can't. <laughs> alright, alright, so in verse, in chapter 33, we're looking at verses 12, 13, and 15. But back to, back to chapter 32. <coughs> I'm a mature adult. At least they censored it. <laughs> I know, like, that... I feel like that joke would have would have been easily... Easily just... <clears throat> just overlooked if I didn't have the subtitles turned on. I'm, I'm sorry, people, I'm just... Good gosh. I'm always a fan of dumb humor. So, verse 2 says this, Son of man, take up a lamentation for Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and say unto him, Thou art like a young lion of the nations. Thou art... <coughs> oh gosh, I'm choking. Thou art as a whale in the seas, and thou camest forth with thy rivers, and troubledest the waters with thy feet, and fouled, foul, foul, oh gosh, I said this earlier, fouledest their rivers. So, what does it mean? Well, what is a lamentation? Well, a lamentation is typically... Uh, bring up this uh, sorrowful news, and that's the simplest definition I have for it. Now, why did God refer to Pharaoh as a young lion of the nations? I guess the best explanation I have is, one... He's probably a he's probably a young man, most likely in his twenties to thirties, and he's rather inexperienced. But despite his inexperience, he has a big presence, like a whale in the seas. And everywhere he goes he ends up stirring up trouble. You know. But why does he say he fouls the rivers? It doesn't really say to... I mean, it does say clearly. He's very arrogant. And often causes a lot of trouble. But... Maybe one of the reasons that he's that it said it in this particular way is a point to the fact of he does a lot more harm than good. <laughs> I'm 
All right. That's all I have for that for that chapter because the rest of the chapter is God breaking down basically how he's going to use a, use essentially another nation to curb stomp Egypt into the dirt. Especially the pharaoh. That is uh, the simplest explanation I have. So now we're looking at verse 12. And what is said in 12 is this. Therefore, thou son of man, say unto thy children, unto the children of thy people, the righteous the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of transgression. For as the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. Now this is a rather interesting thing. This is not the first time we've seen something that's said along these lines in the Bible. And it definitely won't be the last time. So why? Why is this mentioned like this? Simple. It's a warning. Just because you're a quote unquote good person doesn't mean that you're exempt from punishment. Just because you do good, you know, 99% of the time, that 1% when you, you know, When you aren't a good person, like how do I put this? You can't go out and and be a beacon of the community, and then in the recesses of the night, you're doing drug deals. That is the easiest. Gosh, these taser bugs are more than effective. But yeah, that, that is that is the easiest explanation I have to break down that verse and to bring it into modern terms. Now we're going to look at verse 13, which says this. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts to his own righteousness and commits iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Now this one is also another, it's basically following the same theme. Now what is being said here is this. If you rely, if you are, you know, quote unquote, good person, and you rely on that, and you rely on that, you know, good person reputation to cover you when you do something bad, and you're found out. You might as well not have done anything. You might as well just have stayed a bad person. Because, you know, if you rely on your reputation to be a cover, you will be found out. And you will lose everything. Because what happens when you die? I don't think you get to take, you know, your whatever amount of wealth, whatever material things you have, you don't get to take that with you when you die. And the Egyptians may have thought they could. You know, I understand that that is a fair argument. <clears throat> the Egyptians thought that, that, you know, if they're buried with all their riches, they get to take it with them in the afterlife. For those of them that didn't serve God, they're burning in hell 
with nothing to their name except the blood that is ripped from their veins second after second only to be replenished in that very same second That was a terrifying place. And even a pastor can end up in hell. As frightening as it may be. It's not uncommon. So, now we're going to look at verse 15. If the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed... Walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live and not he shall not die. <clears throat> now, this this is a nugget of hope that's being said here. Basically, what's being said is is that kamikaze? I think it was. Well then. Was not expecting that. I will be prepared the next time. So, <laughs> so basically, in verse 15 we get this nice little nugget of hope. If you turn away from the bad things that you're doing, if you turn away from sin and the things that are leading you to damnation, then you shall surely live. This is not the first time we've seen this in the Bible, and the fact that this is even in the Old Testament, we're still in the Old Testament, people. For those that are just, you know, popping in, fast-forwarding to this point, just to see if I'm still talking about the Bible. I am still talking about the Bible, you know, breaking it down. But that's the nice thing I like about God. Not like. Love. This is what I love so deeply about God. If he is nothing else, he is consistent. He says, if you turn away from your iniquity, you turn away from your sin, you get to live for eternity. <clears throat> because sin brings death. It has always brought death. And for those that think that they're getting away, getting away with it, they're not getting away with it. Oh, I'm sorry. You may, what, you may have, quote-unquote, gotten away with it for, what, 60, 70, 80, 90, 120 years? The human body has an expiration date. At least the way it is now, not the perfect body that we get after the tribulation. You know, for those that have decided to come to serve God walk away from their iniquity and you know accept his sacrifice for their salvation they get a new body I'm wondering if the next book I should read should be something in the New Testament I really should make a checklist as well of all the of all the books of the Bible I've read all the books I haven't read. I mean, I've read through them all, but I'm talking about, you know, breaking them down. But that that's its own thing. Uh, let's see. The point of the matter is this. If you're a righteous person and you give yourself to iniquity, and you stay in iniquity, you will die in it. But if you are wicked... And you're in iniquity and you want to walk away God is willing to accept you he will accept you and he will wipe the slate clean and all those bad things you ever did will be a byword 
Or whenever people say, hey, yeah, but he did this. Yeah, but look what he's doing now. But, you know, it goes both ways. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him. To all that call upon him in truth. That is in Psalm 145, verse 18. King James Version of the Bible. If you want to turn away from iniquity, if you want to stay away from hell, then join me in prayer and give your life over to Christ. You don't have to, but I would love to see you guys when I walk in heaven. I would love to see every single one of my students there. That would bring me no greater joy than to see all the people I got to teach in heaven just there chilling with God, safe and away from the darkness. Just a little emotional. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all the ages throughout all the ages world without end amen ephesians chapter 3 verses 20 to 21 now join me in prayer and give your give yourself over to god repeat after me Dear Lord, I've come here today to give my life over to you. I come here because I want to believe and I want to turn away from my old life. I ask that you shall wash away my sins with your heavenly blood and may you come to dwell within my heart and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Save me from the damnation that awaits me. And give me hope for a better tomorrow. And I thank you for doing so. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you made that prayer in faith, welcome to the family. You're a Christian. It literally that simple. And if you want... Your natural next step is to go before, you know, get get the baptism of the water. You don't have to, but it helps kind of solidify it in your own mind. That's where you go before man, God, demon, and angel to announce that the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior. Before being dunked under the water and being brought up, signifying the death of the old man, drowning him out, and the resurrection or birth of the new man. You know, being born again. Now, if you want to represent the channel, I want you to go before, you know, go out, help out the least your societies. That means helping the homeless, comforting the widowed, remembering your veterans, treating your prisoners like human beings, because I don't see that enough. And most importantly, protect the children. The children, the children are the lifeblood of an entire nation. If they are corrupted, the nation is dead doesn't matter what nation it is if you want to destroy a nation you always start with the children so protect them protect them with a fierceness I cannot stress this enough it's not just in the orphans anymore may God help us all but if that seems too much for you to do, and I understand, it's kind of intense. <clears throat> I want you to share the video or share the channel with other people. Bring it out. Spread it. Subscribe to the channel. I need more people. I need to know more people are in this classroom. <clears throat> uh, like the video or comment and break down the chapters yourself if you think I did it wrong. If I did it right, then, 
you know, let me know that I did as such. And if I did wrong, that's fair. But hey, if that's still too much, just visit silverwatchmanswares.com. I lower the prices to be as reasonable as possible. But unfortunately, I'm going with a third party seller, so my prices are only about as low as that third party can let me go. It's kind of a shame, but it's uh, the unfortunate truth of the matter. At least until I, by the grace of God, have the ability to manufacture my own. Not gonna lie. This episode ended up a little more intense than I was expecting. With a little bit more laughter than I was expecting. And you know what? That's pretty cool. Thank you all for watching. Glory be to God. And this is the Silver Watchman signing out.